Yo, what's going on, Epic 7 players? I'm Sue, but feel free to call me Pat, and this is my quick beginner's guide to Wyvern in 2024. In case you're new and don't know, Epic 7 is what is known as a gear gotcha. That's a type of gotcha game where the strength and quality of your equipment is worth far more than how many rare five stars you have. In order to get strong equipment early on, the best way for you to do that is to farm the different hunt stages that are in the game. Of all of the hunts, Wyvern is pretty much unanimously the most popular one and the short reason for why that is is because it drops the speed set any character that wears four pieces of the speed set gets a massive boost to their overall speed speed is considered by many veterans to be the strongest stat in all of epic 7 and like 99 percent of the cast can take advantage of it therefore farming wyvern for the speed set is very very good and one of the most consistent ways for you to progress a new account towards the end game. Right now, as I'm recording this video, it is currently the game's sixth anniversary event, which with its dash pass gives a ton of free gear to help jumpstart a new account. This video will help you capitalize on that jumpstart and progress to the end game quickly with a free team that you see right here on your screen in the game's lobby. We'll go over how to unlock all of these characters, how to get them ready for Wyvern, and wrap up with an example run of Wyvern 13 at the end, so that, that way you can see it in action. So let's start this guide off by talking about building a starting foundation of gear that we can use to kind of progress our way up the Wyvern ladder. If you're watching this video during the sixth anniversary, on the left-hand side, there should be this Epic Dash button that you can click, and in it, you'll see Epic Dash Pass. There are daily and weekly missions for you to complete, and completing them will progress you up this track which will give you a bunch of free gear, like this one, for example. We're gonna be using a lot of that free gear to gear Sigret for this guide, so make sure that you're doing those. Also, Goblamu's treasure storage, you can run this up to 10 times a day to get a bunch of starter gear for your account. I highly recommend you do that. Once you're able to clear Wyvern 13, though, you're not really gonna need any of Goblamu's treasure storage stuff, so until then, make sure you're doing it 10 times a day. If you're watching this video and the sixth anniversary event is over, then you're gonna to have to rely on the free gear that comes from the adventurous path that is located on this button here on the right hand side with the girl's face. Simply just do what it asks of you, whatever quests there are, and you will eventually acquire a bunch of free gear for free that you can use in order to outfit your characters to get started on your wyvern journey. Now let's talk about each of the characters on the team and how to acquire them. First up, we're going to talk about Furious. Furious is going to be our primary defense breaker and is also going to help us cheat on having good quality gear because he gives a bunch of critical hit chance to the team. He is super, super good in my opinion. You always need a defense breaker. It will make the runs so much easier. It'll make your farming journey so much better. In order to unlock Furious, you need to pull him from the game's gotchas or you can get him for free through the game's connections menu. That is located here under hero in the lower left hand corner. Hit recruit, go to connections, and then scroll down here and find Furious and complete all of his little mini side quests and the character is yours for free. Most of his quests require you to be decently far into episode two of adventure. So if you're not that far, you've got some farming to do and you're gonna wanna do it because you're gonna need to be at least that far from Montmorency as well. So make sure you do that. The only quest that I think is going to be very difficult for a new player is this one here of Gift 400 Brave Crests. This is acquired through just being in a guild, so you want to make sure you get in a girl guild early and often. But if for some reason you just don't have a guild, you can also get 400 Brave Crests from the Adventurous Path, which is that button on the right-hand side of the lobby that we talked about earlier. As for how to build Furious, let's take a look at his details. So on this first screen here, you're gonna to wanna to go to go to skill enhance, and you're gonna to wanna to enhance his skill two, which is morale boost, and also his skill three fatal bullet. For morale boost, we wanna get the minus one turn cooldown because it will help him activate fatal bullet more frequently in a fight. As for fatal bullet, you wanna take it to plus six because it'll give you a 100% chance when he attacks to decrease the Wyvern's defense for two turns, which will massively increase the damage of your team. That is his primary role on your team. Morale boost helps gives you a bunch of free stats. Fatal bullet helps increase the damage of your team. As for how to build them, you go to this second tab here. Artifact, Daydream Joker is gonna be the best one for most of the characters that you have. It's a three-star one. And also when you unlock Secret, you will get six copies of it for free. So 
you have no need to worry. You will always end up with one of these before attempting a serious wyvern climb. As for the actual gear, you can see I am entirely on dash pass free gear, as well as the level 70 helmet you get from the adventurer's path. So it's a mix of a bunch of free gear. As for the important stats to hit, I recommend your ring be effectiveness percentage and your boots as speed as the main stat. The only real stats that Furious needs in order to succeed is 50% critical hit chance, 65% effectiveness, and as much speed as you can get. After that, any other bonus stats and attack or critical hit damage is super, super worth it. For levels, level 50 is sufficient, but you'll notice that I have him as 5 star Awoken. That's a really important thing that I want to highlight here for new players in this video. You go to Awaken and you use runes as well as Catalyst to awaken all of these different little gems here on a character. These give base stats. Gear multiplies your character's base stats. By having Furious as a 5-star Awoken character, he will be getting the most amount of value out of his equipment. He will be significantly stronger than just having him as unawakened and putting really strong gear on him. So make sure you're awakening all of your characters, right? This is a really, really important thing to touch on. Now with Furious out of the way, let's take a look at Angelic Montmorency, who is going to be our tank, which means you're going to put her in the front slot of the Wyvern fight for your team. And she's also going to be our main healer. If you don't want to use Montmorency, you can also use the four-star Angelica. Both Angelic Montmorency as well as Angelica are obtained through the game's connections. Again, simply go to Hero, Recruit, and Connections, and you will be able to find both of them there. Montmorency, though, will come as just base Montmorency. The next thing that you have to do is specialty change her to Angelic Montmorency. In order to do so, again, you come to the lower left-hand corner, go to Heroes, Recruit, and Specialty Change, and find Angelic Montmorency. Basically, get her to level 30, do all the necessary quest lines to level her to Angelic Montmorency, and you're done. If you're wondering why you want to unlock Angelic Montmorency, it's because specialty changes change a three-star character into essentially a five-star character with significantly better stats, a bunch of bonus passes, and stronger abilities overall. So it's really important that you don't neglect specialty changes. Angelic Montmorency is one of the most useful ones that you'll use throughout your entire Epic 7 career. And considering she doesn't need premium resources like the four-star Angelica in order to actually progress her through when Angelica would fall off, I, me personally, I would rather have Angelic Montmorency just overall. So that's why I've chosen her for this guy. So let's go to details and talk about how to build Montmorency. So as far as abilities go, it's very important that you have Purification and Earnest Prayer at plus 5. Both of these skills are freely able to be skill enhanced using Stigma, which just costs Stamina. You get Stigma simply for playing the game. One Stigma equals one Stamina, right? That's pretty much how it goes and vice versa. So as long as you're playing Epic 7, Stigma is pretty easy to get. It shouldn't be too difficult. You just have to keep playing more stages, farm more. You'll get enough Stigma to level these up. But having these at plus five is very, very important. You need as much healing as possible for the very difficult Wyvern fights in order for your team to survive. On top of that, specialty change heroes, like I said, have a bunch of bonus perks and passives. If you go to Awaken, not only do you want to awaken this character to get the most amount of base stats, but you'll see that she has this skill tree button that only specialty change characters have. This gives you a bunch of bonus perks. For example, here you'll get a 10% extra health when using the S2 here on the skill. You want to have at least her at plus 15 with the skills that I have outlined here unlocked. But if you're really die hard and you're really struggling, get the rest of the bonus stats. For example, here you get a bunch of like bonus ER and damage suffered from like Solitude Rune. You can get all of that stuff unlocked. Plus 30 would be ideal. Obviously, in case you don't know, runes are acquired from the game Spirit Altar. That is kind of how you do it. You can just click on it, go to the item guide, quickly hit the button, and jump on over there. So that is kind of what you want to do with Angelic Montmorency as far as skills go. As for the build, I'm going to be using Water's Origin, which is a four-star artifact. But if you have other five stars or four stars that you've pulled for a Soul Weaver, then I highly recommend you use those. Whatever you got is fine. My gear is pretty simplistic as well. It is all of the free gear from Adventurer's Path that has the health substat, except for my boots which I purchased with Conquest points through the game's PvP. But if you don't have them, just use Dash Gear. All you need is the speed main stat here, and you are good. You just want Montmorency to do a decent amount of turns. The only stats that really matter on her are speed, health, and defense. You just want her to be as bulky as possible. 
because her healing is tied to how much HP she has and her survivability is tied to how much HP and defense she has. So that's all you really need to worry about with this character. Next up, we're going to talk about Sigret, who is going to be our main damage dealer. She's probably the best Wyvern character in the game until you hit the super extremely late game where a couple of rare characters could contend for that title. But for 99% of the player base, Sigret is going to be the best Wyvern character. She's so good that the game gives her to you for free through the Expert Hunt Challenge, which that sounds daunting because this is a beginner's guide, but it's just the name of the quest line. And it's kind of hidden in a different place than the connections. I really wish it was under connections. In order to get Sigret, you're going to go up here to your mailbox where it says event here with all of our mail. Come down here to where it says ongoing events with Tamarin. You click this and then on the right hand tab, scroll all the way down here until you find Hunt Expert Challenge. Now from here, you'll be greeted with this screen where you can change to whatever hunt you want. You're obviously going to want to pick Wyvern because this is a Wyvern team. It is a Wyvern guy. I'm going to show you through Vivian because I have already done Sigret, so there's no way for me to actually show you that. So just pretend that this Vivian screen is going to be Sigret. So you'll be greeted with these three quests that you're going to have to do, and it'll give you Sigret as well as six Daydream Jokers. Now, it's going to be complete Wyvern Hunt seven or higher ten times. That should be pretty easy as long as you have your characters leveled and awoken. They don't even really need that much gear. You can put them on like level like one or level like 40 gear that you got from adventure from just playing. That's enough for you to easily clear hunt seven at least 10 times. It's very, very simple to get through the first seven hunts. It's only once you start to get towards like Wyvern 10, 11 and so on that it starts to get a little bit harder. So this should be pretty easy. I feel like for most players to clear. Next, you're going to want to get the Blazing Rage Catalyst for Sigret. That can be found by farming it in adventure or using any of the free uh kind of like uh catalyst packs that the game gives you there's a number of ways you could find it if you're unsure on how to find the specific catalyst for cigarette simply go to details here right go to awaken and then you'll see right here in the lower hand corner this is the blazing rage you could click on it here's all the different stages that you can actually farm with it so that is kind of how you find that and the last quest that you need to do is to get eight of the epic uh kind of like ascension materials and to find those you simply just go to sanctuary go over here to forest of souls growth altar and then go here to spirit well you need eight of the purple ones in order to finish the event try to collect them one at a time because sometimes the quest glitches out so if you do like the acquire 10 button it might not count so i recommend doing one at a time and again this seems daunting for a new player because it's 4250 stigma per spirit well but again that's simply just you know, 4,000 stamina spent. Considering how much the game showers you with stamina, just keep playing, you'll be fine. In case you're not aware, by the way, you can kind of auto in the background by using the game's pet system. I highly recommend looking into that. Assigning a pet will allow you to do double time and kind of background battle some stuff. So now that you understand how to unlock Sigret, let's talk about how we build the character. Again, you wanna make sure that you have the character entirely awoken. As for skill levels, I would recommend trying to max out Sever, which is the first one, because that's going to be the primary damage tool you have, as well as Guillotine, which is your primary nuke. So these two, in general, are the ones I would focus on for skill ups. And yes, this does cost Malagora, which is the premium upgrade currency that is finite. But considering how long you'll be using Epic uh, Cigarette in your Epic 7 career, I highly recommend doing this. I think it is absolutely worth it. Unlike the four-star Angelica, which I talked about earlier in the video. As for gear, Secret's the simplest one by far to build. All you need to do is put the strongest Daydream Joker level that you have. I use the uh, free Adventurous Path 70 necklace and ring. And added, the rest of the gear is simply the free destruction set gear that the game gives you from the Epic Dash Pass. If you don't have this, you could use the free attack set that the game gives you from Adventurous Path. You could use all of this stuff and you will be perfectly fine. All right? Again, super simple. Those things when leveled up is probably more than enough. If you want to know specifics on stats, 50% critical hit chances could be enough alongside of Furious, and then as much attack and crit damage as you can get. If you have effectiveness, that's also okay as well, because it'll inflict bleed on the Wyvern, which is kind of beneficial. It will help out just a little bit. Now let's talk about the last character. I've chosen Mui because I think that he is a really strong uh, complement to Furious. He helps with uh, defense breaking in case Furious misses defense break. 
He gives attack down, which means you don't need to have Angelic Montmorency be as strong as possible. But he is a three star that can only be obtained from the game's gotchas. If you didn't pull him, four stars like Clarissa and Corinne can also work. Or you can use the three star Terranor Guard, which is another fantastic three star. He's one of the best characters actually in the entire game for PvE. I know he looks like a generic NPC, but he's amazing. Uh, so that's another alternative you could use to me. And if for some reason you don't have any of the four options that we talked about, Alexa is going to be your budget option and she is available from the game's connections. Regardless, let's jump into it and talk about Mui and his actual stats. So he's pretty much exactly the same as Furious. Try to get him awakened up as much as possible. Get the effect percentage skill up on like Wind Cutter and uh, here on Leap Strike, right? And even this one Cold Hearted Management. Anything you can get in these skill levels is going to be much appreciated, especially because he's a three star. Doesn't use premium currency to do it. So there's no reason not to upgrade these as much as you could possibly get. And his stats are going to be identical to Furious pretty much for the most part. Just throw a Daydream Joker on him because it'll help increase your team's overall damage. Put some speed boots on him and then put an effectiveness ring on him. Make sure he has 65% plus effectiveness, 50% plus critical hit chance and as much speed. And after that, just dump attack and crit damage into him. And that is pretty much it. Regardless of what other character you decide to go with, right? If you don't want to go with Mui and you want to go with a different character like Alexa, for example, or Corinne, they can all be built pretty much the same way. 50% critical hit chance, boots on speed, 65% uh, percent effectiveness, and you are pretty much good to go. So now that we understand the team, let's take a look at some example Wyvern 13 gameplay. So here is our team composition, Montmorency in the front because it increases the likelihood she'll be attacked and she is the tankiest person on our team with some sustain. So as long as she's in the front, the rest of the positions don't really matter here. First stage, you're gonna fight a bunch of adds here. If you have Clarissa as your fourth character instead of Mui, this should be quite a bit easier. But otherwise, you're just going to have to slowly whittle down everything on auto. Uh, defense breaks from Mui and Furious will help a lot here. As long as the Lizards don't end up all ganging up on one person, and that is not Montmorency, you should be fine. Uh, there's just some random RNG where sometimes a character gets focused, they get killed early. Nothing you can really do about that. Almost every single hunt team in Epic 7 has some kind of fail percentage. Usually about like 15 to 20% failure rate is acceptable. So as long as you're clearing the majority of times, don't worry about it. As long as it's like more than like 60 or 70%, I would be pretty much content with that. Once you actually end up killing these adds, you'll move on to the Wyvern himself. Essentially, he can attack other characters on your team unless he has a certain number of debuffs on him. Once he has that many, he'll always focus the front, which is what we're trying to do. We get attack down here from Mui. We get defense break from Furious, right? We could get some bleach from Secret. As long as we have a team that has a bunch of debuffs on it, we're fine. The reason I constructed the team the way it is is because with Secret and Furious, you should almost always have a decent chunk of debuffs. And as long as your fourth character has that 65% effectiveness, like we talked about, it should be pretty consistent. You should almost always have enough debuffs. The only other problem you might encounter with this fight is that if you don't have a lot of damage, if you don't have too many attack percentage or crit damage percentage rolls on Furious and your fourth character, well then the Wyvern might go into what we call the barrier phase where he gets a giant shield. You'll have to defense break him during that shield and then burst him down. If for some reason you're not able to kill him before that shield dissipates, then he will end up killing your entire team, in which case then you're going to have to try to find or farm other like dash pass gear or you know other gear at lower wyvern levels in order to actually kind of boost that damage up to get past that shield phase like that's essentially an enrage mechanic if you just don't have enough damage and there you go wyvern 13 cleared with a bunch of free units as well as free equipment obtained from the sixth anniversary event and the adventurer's path if you're a new player and you still need help with things in epic 7 let me know how i can help you down in the comment section below like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and until next time, happy hunting.